Settle in, everyone. We're bringing Hexy back. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer Stand with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. You may have noticed that the uh, digs have changed just a little bit. That's because... W the back room has finally been cleaned out, stuff has been moved to storage, donated, or just plain given away, and what was garbage was thrown out, and now I have well and truly established a gamer's den, with the help of my lovely wife, and of course my most adorable co-host, Nora, learner initiate to the third circle of lore, and uh, you all know all the titles, I have... I can never keep them straight at this point, but she, the point is she's learning and quite advanced for her age. Incredible intellect there. I hope to only nurture and encourage it. But I'm digressing from the point of today's video. New place, able to record again. It's not perfect, not all the way done, but we are on our way. And now we are going to be continuing on here with the player's guide, specifically looking at witches. And today we are going to start digging into the witches' hex abilities. Now. This is where a lot of your oomph is going to be coming from with the witch character class. And honestly, it's much harder to select a bad choice when it comes to the various hex abilities. Uh, there's only a small handful that are decent choices and only a very few that are actually terrible choices overall. Um, otherwise, you're getting a lot of good to really great choices, and of course, we're going to be breaking those down today. Now, I will say that because there are so many great choices and good choices to go around, we are going to be focusing mainly on those today, though I'll mention a couple of others. And a lot of the other ones, they're still great abilities, but they're more situational. They don't come up very often. A lot of them are more roleplay and flavor based, although they can still be very useful if your DMs, and I'm looking at all of you DMs out there, work with you to make sure that your ability selections maintain at least a little bit of viability. You still need to try to be creative and make good use of your powers on your own, but every now and then a good DM should be throwing you a bone and at least helping you feel useful and contributing, like you're helping to at least move the plot along, if not mechanically engaging in combat all the time. But that said, let's go ahead and dive right into the various hexes that you have at your beck and call. And first off, it, this one is massively important. It is usable with just about all of your different hex abilities is cackle. As a move action, you get to cackle like a madman or madwoman to extend hexes on a foe. Uh, the example I have listed here are misfortune and it extends it by one additional round. As it's written, with the rules as written, there are no limits to this. Now, for those of you that DM or run games in Pathfinder, or if you've adapted the Witch character class to 3rd uh, edition or brought it into 5th edition somehow, you may want to house rule it a little bit because, uh, well, as you'll see, being able to extend some of these various hexes is massively potent very very dangerous i got to experience this very recently with a, a friend of mine who brought a witch character into my high fantasy steampunk campaign setting which i really have to come up with a name for at some point so i can just belt it out faster but it really picked apart and ruined my big bad boss character's ability to just stomp face and tear through the players. Uh, not that I wanted to slaughter them all, but I at least wanted to make them fear for their lives, and he turned this thing into, well, a helpless little kitten by comparison. But let's move on. Next up is Cauldron. By selecting Cauldron, you get the Brew Potion feat as a bonus feat, and you get a plus four insight modifier to craft alchemy checks. Craft alchemy you can use to make tanglefoot bags, uh, thunderstones, various different useful items, and um, I'd argue also creating the alchemical reagent portion of potions while you're going about the process of actually enchanting them and infusing them with magical powers. But that's just a little thing from me. Um, I'm sure other DMs run Brew Potion this way as well, but this is very useful. I mean, getting an extra feed out of just a little, um, picking out a little ability here like this, plus that, plus, uh, along with that plus four insight modifier, 
It's incredibly useful. Great to have, certainly not a bad pick at all. And it also fits the witch motif just really well. I mean, come on, you, you almost have to select it just for that flavor right there. But then we also have flight. By fifth level, when you, when, you're, when you get this, you're able to fly for five minutes, among many other abilities that are going to be immensely useful to you. Incredible to have so early. Not many other classes really get this, except for through items. Uh, spe for spells, it comes up for other casters later on. Um, at least, you know, absolutely true flight. They may get some other options, but this is really going to be beneficial for you in terms of mobility and also getting advantageous position when you're on the battlefield. And then we have Misfortune. Misfortune is, it's so good if you don't pick it up you are shooting yourself in the foot. You will be crippling yourself instead of crippling your opponents and that's what you want this for is crippling your opponents massively. You can force a target within 30 feet to have to roll twice and take the worst results for attack rolls, ability checks, saves, and skill checks. It's basically, in 5th edition terms, you're applying disadvantage to your opponents. Now, they do get a will save to resist. Normally, it's, uh, I believe it's three rounds plus your, your character's intelligence modifier uh, that the misfortune will typically last for. But if they make their will save, it lasts for one round. So they'll still suffer it regardless of what whether or not they make their will safe. So it will uh, stay on. But with Cackle, you can keep extending that regardless of whether or not they made their will safe. At least with the rules as written. Uh, various D all you many DMs and storytellers out there, like I said, may want to house rule this a little bit. Because you don't want to just totally cripple the Cackle selection. You know, want to throw uh, absolutely throw your players a bone there. But... I can see the need for scaling it back just a little bit. Say, you know, they can cackle twice for misfortune and then they have to try to cast it again. But the thing is, is that, uh, um, yeah, you just need to work on it a little bit, I think, because uh, otherwise yeah, it gets a bit, uh, bit tricky there, especially considering there's not really a limit to usage on these, unless there's something specifically written within the rules, like, uh, once a creature has made their save or gained the benefit from a particular hex, they're no longer able to be affected by said hex again for a full 24 hours or something to that effect. But anyways, let's move on from here. We keep going on down to slumber, where you focus on a single target again within 30 feet of you and they have to make a will save or fall asleep for a number of rounds equal to your character level. Uh, if you don't understand why that's not huge, it's uh, it's five, you know, it's two, three, four, five, however many character levels you have of combat rounds where they're unable to do anything. Uh, they can awaken if they're attacked by another player or yourself, but if you just tie them up, bind them, it's it could be argued that's a hostile action, but you're not directly harming them. You're just... Uh, impeding their ability to move once they wake up so you know there's i would argue that uh, that does not necessarily wake up the target but you know this, your mileage may vary depending on how technical and devious your particular dm wants to be in either case this provides huge tactical advantages i mean let's throw this sucker down on on a wizard big bad evil guy or some target that's a, that's able to be affected by sleep effects uh and you take them out of the fight early, you nullify a great deal of your opponent's tactical advantage and ability to affect you, and thus save yourself and your team, the rest of the players, a great deal of suffering that may otherwise be had. And then we go on from there to Evil Eye. Evil Eye lasts uh, three plus your intelligence modifier number of rounds, unless they make their will save, and then, like with Misfortune, it lasts for one round. It gives a minus two to AC, saves, attacks, or skill checks. A cackle works with this one to extend it another round, and by level eight, this increases by minus four. Now, considering that, you know, first level, second level, even third level, a minus two penalty is a pretty big hit. Uh, but the thing is, is that you have to select which one you're affecting on a particular target. And once you do that, uh, well, you know, consider... Um, at level two, a minus two penalty to any of these things is probably going to be crippling. 
Skill checks, maybe not as much unless it's a particularly weak skill, but all the other things that are combat related, this is going to be incredibly painful. And in particular, considering that you can throw this down on a target, affect their, say, their will saves, and then hit them with misfortune, and then keep cackling, or hit them with any number of other of these hexes, and you have a recipe for a bunch of gloom and doom and hex combinations on top of your targets, and you'll just have them falling before you, or rather falling before your for your party as you help them feel like they're they're doing the bulk of the work when really you provided the massive advantage that let them get away with everything. Then we come to Fortune. The target you designate can reroll any ability check, attack, or saving throw, or skill check. This lasts for only one round and can only be used once every 24 hours. This is one of those hexes that specifically has a written in limit now i would argue that cackle does not work with misfortune but again your mileage may vary depending on your dm but even still this is like imposing a an advantage uh, sco uh role to your allies which if you pay attention or paid attention at all is a huge benefit particularly in combat against so many different uh, opponents, different abilities coming their way, or trying to hit a target. This can be massively helpful. The only thing that keeps this from being a great hex is the fact that it's usable only once. The target can carry it with them for however long, but they can use it once and it lasts for only one round. So they can only, you know, they get one reroll in that one round once they activate it. And then 24 hours later, they can get another fortune hex thrown down on them and now we come up to scar which is actually really useful i almost made this one blue um, there's will saves to resist this on failure the witch can use hexes on a target up to one mile away they do so by marking the target with a scar that persists through different illusions polymorphing effects anything that might change or alter their appearance this scar you mark them with will remain. Great bit of flavor here. Lots of uh, amazing role play opportunities available. And the tar uh, the witch can affect targets with scars up, up to an equal to their intelligence bonus. So you can mark your whole party and start using the beneficial hexes on them from up to a mile away. You don't even have to go into dungeons, into danger. You can be sitting back in your hut or wherever your base of operations is and just start throwing on beneficial uh, hexes to your, to your party while scrying away and watching them as they fight or make their way through the various encounters. Really, really useful. And like I said, there's the role play opportunity here by permanently marking a target. And think about it. If it's a target that can transform its appearance at will and you scar it so that way you can always identify it, say you scar its face somehow, you're always going to know when this particular opponent shows up if they somehow get away. Uh, though, if you're able to scar their face, I would assume that uh, I would assume they're in a position where you can probably kill them, but, uh, you know, through the course of roleplay and the like, especially with really good storytelling, what's better than a recurring villain that you have left a permanent disfigurement on? Oh, by the way, uh, I say permanent, it's permanent for as long as you want it to be, but once you will it to go away, it will go away. So that part's up to you. Then we come to tongues. Now, this is an ability that, uh, came into effect for the monk but with the tongue of the sun and moon i believe the ability is i rated that red uh, along with treant monk because it didn't come into play until level 17. but this comes in much earlier for the witch and a witch with this hex can understand any spoken language for a number of minutes per day equal to their level as the comprehend languages spell uh, the duration does not need to be consecutive, but it goes in one minute increments. And then at fifth level, it comes to speak any languages as per the tongue spell, which that's amazing. That is fantastic. Absolutely incredible to have. It's great to have this ability and to be able to get it so early. Having tongues at fifth level 
really, really useful. You'll never be left out of the loop on anything unless, you know, you're failing your sense motive checks. In which case, uh, you get the idea. And then we have, last but not least, Ward. Ward gives a plus two bonus to AC and saving throws until the target is hit or they fail a saving throw. It increases by one at level eight and at 16 for, uh, for level, I'm sorry, for a bonus of four which is absolutely great. The only drawback to it is once the target is hit or fails or save, the bonus goes away, but those are good bonuses to have. And the fact that they will remain for however long, they're essentially indefinite. There's no real listed end time for them. So throw this on a target, they're good until they take a hit, which you know, sucks it goes away, but you have probably saved your friends from taking a hit or falling for that charm spell or making their save out of the uh, fireball and taking less damage so again really great one to have and there are many many other hexes to have here like uh, poison steep it's i agree with most of the different message boards and discussions and build guides that uh, i've taken a look through it's definitely a situational one but by second level you get access to the poison spell so that's really really useful but your target has to eat and ingest whatever it is you have poisoned it's that classic snow white poisoned apple shtick um so you know you have to figure out a way to uh, to befuddle and cause your target to eat the object you're trying to poison them with which you know for combat doesn't work out so well at least not direct combat but if you're playing a game with a lot of courtly intrigue and the like uh, a lot of cloak and dagger backstabbery and skullduggery abound in this game of intrigue and shadowy work then this spell spell is going to be really useful incredibly useful because well it's a it's a spell like effect you don't need to have vials of poison on hand you don't need to have anything that could be used as evidence against you or against another target you just poison something uh and you get it fed to your target somehow say at a fancy dinner where there's nothing suspect going on and you poison your target mm, absolutely perfect again plenty of rich role play flavor right here and opportunities abound for especially particularly for campaigns not quite as heavy on the direct combat and for campaigns that offer a fair bit of variety in the types of encounters that the dm is throwing your way but again your mileage will vary depending greatly on your dm and hopefully he, they have talked with you and you've worked out what exactly it is you need to build up in your character and for this reason and more, these hexes right here, including the major hexes and grand hexes that will be coming in a later episode, are why the witch is such a powerful buffer and debuffing class. They can take the wind out of almost anybody's sails pretty handily, and even when the targets succeed on their saves, they can still nail them with some pretty nasty effects and then use that cackle hex to keep them right rolling on along there. So the uh, god i can only go on <laughs> i could go on more but we're gonna cut it off there i hope you enjoyed today's video and if you have maybe consider giving me a like there letting me know that you enjoyed it and hell if you really enjoyed it go ahead and leave some comments down below there or even if you didn't enjoy it let me know the feedback can only help me get better here especially having the new digs having all my lore on display all my nerd cred readily available in the back right there <laughs> I love it. But uh, if you've really been enjoying everything here, why not consider joining us down here at the Gamers Den and clicking that subscribe button? But with that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore, and your storyteller extraordinaire. You folks have yourselves a good night.